Thank you for having me here at uh, Bates Botu- Botanical Boot Camp. Uh, my name is Brent Grunfeld. I am the sales rep for the Tennessee area uh, for Monrovia Nurseries. Um, Monrovia, just give a little background on Monrovia. We have uh, four nurseries at four corners of the country. We uh, we have a nursery in Oregon, California, Georgia, and Connecticut, and uh, we ship into the uh, Middle Tennessee area on a, a weekly basis. So uh, we're here today. We're we're going to talk about new plants and uh, some exciting new plants. That you know, it uh, that I think every gardener should have. We've got things here for shade. We've got things for sun. Um, there's a lot of diversity in new plants now. Um, the breeders are working uh, diligently uh, to uh, find new and unusual things. And we work with breeders from around the world to make sure that we're bringing you the best uh, breeding uh, that is out there. And um, we we have a team that uh, works diligently uh, and, and, and works with the breeders that come to us and we go to them. And uh, it's just a fun process for our, our team to go out there and find some new plants. So, so we're going to get going with some new plants today. And uh, let's talk about this little sunflower that's right here. This is actually a, a helianthus. Uh, and this is um, Golden Girl. Um, well, no, actually, this is Brown Eye Girl. We have two varieties, uh, Golden Girl and um, Brown Eye Girl. And the, the difference between the two is the Brown Eye Girl has the brown center in it, and the Golden Girl has just a straight center to the flower. So this is a repeat blooming sunflower. And what makes that uh, different than other repeat blooming sunflowers on the market is that it um, it does not produce a sunflower seed. So the repeat there's other varieties that will produce a seed and that stops it from blooming uh, continuously. But this variety, uh, this is exclusive to Monrovia. This variety is going to bloom for you uh, from from May all the way into frost into October. And it will continually set uh, uh, new buds. As you can see here, there's a new bud coming. Um, each plant will produce about a thousand blooms uh, over the course of the season. It'll get about uh, two and a half uh, by three. Uh, so it, it will create quite the show in the garden. Uh, but because it doesn't produce the the seed in the flower, uh, it's not putting that energy in the seed. It just produces more buds. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Now, is this brand Brand new? No, this is uh, probably our third year with it, but it it, it uh, merits talking about it every year that we talk about new plants uh, because of what it does for the landscape. When you do this in a mass planting, it is absolutely spectacular. So, uh, so we really love uh, the helianthus brown eye girl and golden girl. Uh, it just it, it brings a bright uh, cheer to to any garden. Great for in the ground, also great for containers. Um, you could do one plant in a um, a twenty inch container, and it's going to fill that container just with that. But if you do that with mixed plants with other things, it would create quite the show as well. So, so, and just so you know, that is an annual. All right. So you need to plant that every year. Now, right here, this is, um, uh, Endurascape, uh, uh, verbena. This is bicolor pink. And this is a really cool uh, verbena. This is, um, there's a lot of verbenas that have been on the market for a year, but the Endurascape series, I've got two, I've got, um, the, the bicolor here, and I've got burgundy on the other side, uh, which maybe we can bring over here. So this is the burgundy. Um, these will continuously bloom without any deadheading uh, needed. Uh, makes a fantastic ground cover, um, about 12 inches tall, uh, two feet wide. It will bloom all summer. And the Endurascape, this one, actually, in, our, in the, the Middle Tennessee market, there's a great chance that this thing's going to come back year after year, where there's other verbenas that have been sold as perennials, not quite as, uh, as hardy as this. So the Endurascape series is, is really a fantastic addition to the, the, the verbena market. So, so this little beauty back here, this is Grande Black um, Heuchera, and uh, it's, it's Grande. It's, it gets pretty good size so you can see that here um so this is a two gallon pot um this is going to get about um um 18 to to uh 24 uh tall and about the same wide and it does look like the camera is frozen so hopefully uh, you get a long picture of this um sorry about that no no problem uh but you can see that this it, it still has some silver uh veining in the um or silver cast to the foliage uh, and then the other side uh, has a velosa type foliage, which is a little bit more of the um, um, kind of a velvety uh, feel to it. Um, it does get a nice uh, spike that comes up that just sits right above the flower, whereas a lot of other heucheras will uh, will 
sent out a spike that gets really tall and then kind of floppy and not really showy. Uh, but because these just sit right up above the plant, uh, when it gets happy in the ground and, and uh, um, you know, starts blooming more, um, you're just going to have a sea of uh, white flowers on top of that. So it contrasts nice with the silver and the purple. So it's quite cool. All right. So here, Sorry about the technical difficulty. Uh, it was on the wrong network, so now the camera should be working properly. Okay. This is Senecio Angel Wing, and I think it's so bright and so silver. It is reflective. That the, the, full, the light may be reflecting too much on it, so uh, it's very interesting. This is an annual, but this is a nice filler plant for containers. Um, so you can, uh, if you want a, a silver contrast to um, what you're planting, you know, if you're putting blues in there, you know, it would contrast really nice with the silvers. But uh, it uh, kind of gives you a, a, a big, broad leaf that um, that doesn't flower, but it just kind of gives you that interest with the um, the foliage. Uh, you could also do one of these in, in a large uh, white or black container. And um, in time, once it's happy, it will get pretty large. Um, I've seen uh, ones that are a year old that could be two by two. And you would say, well, why would I mix that into a container if it's going to get that large? Um, once you mix it in with other plants, it kind of kind of holds back the, um, the growth habit of it. Um, so it's not going to get as large as, as uh, it would if it's planted in a single container by itself. Um, this is a new plant um, past couple of years, and uh, it actually has taken the, the, the nursery industry by storm. Uh, it's amazing how well the, the consumers like this, and uh, we love it. It grows well, and we just love the contrast. Um, there's another one that we do. It's called uh, Centuria Snowy Owl, and uh, that has a little bit more of a Dusty Miller look to it, and um, it so you've got a smaller, uh, more um, um, serrated foliage to it uh, with deep serrations to it. And it adds a fantastic texture to, the, uh, to, to any container you're doing. Or if you're using it as a, a mass planting, uh, say with blue salvias, um, and use the uh, Centurio or even the, uh, the uh, Angel Wing um, as a, um, a, you could use it as a backdrop or you could use it a front, depending on which variety of other plant that you plant with it. Uh, but it makes a nice border. It is a full sun plant. Um, it does not like to be in the shade. Uh, it will stretch and kind of uh, get a little bit moldy if it's in shade, but uh, full sun for sure. And actually on the heucheras, um, you want to put those in a more of a shaded area versus in a, in a full sun area. Uh, morning sun, uh, hot afternoon sun, the heucheras have a tendency to, uh, to melt out. And also going back to here, this is full sun too. Uh, this does not, the helianthus does not like shade at all. So make sure you plant that in full sun. All right. So what else? Let's talk about this plant over here. Let's see. I might have to bring it over. Let's do that. We're going to make a mess of this table before it's over, uh, but it's all good. All right. Do a little rearranging here. Okay. So we can see this. This is um, Golden Jackpot Wigilia. Uh, what makes this plant really cool? And it, the picture, the, the camera's probably picking up the golds. It's, uh, it, the, the more sun it's in, the brighter gold it will be. So to have a Wigilia that is bright gold, uh, some people may even consider this a little chartreuse. Um, but in this picture, it looks more chartreuse, but in the outside, in the full sun, it looks gold. And then when you get these flowers here, the um, the raspberry flowers against the gold, the contrast is quite fantastic. Um, this plant will get about um, five by five, um, will reliably bloom from year to year. Uh, it's just, um, it's a rock solid, hardy plant. Um, it's very cold hardy. Um, and Wigilias uh, in certain areas um, don't necessarily like the summer heat, but these will do well in the middle Tennessee area. So not a problem, um, but really fantastic color, nice accent plant to, uh, to a landscape. Um, you know, if you like golds and chartreuse colors, uh, doing a whole hedge of them would be quite uh, showy in the spring when they're blooming. Um, this will um, send, send sporadic flowers during the summer months. So that's kind of cool too, that it's not just a one and nunner and uh, giving you just the flowers in the spring. So that's neat. Um, here's a dianthus. Look at this. You know, we're, we're all used to uh, like fire witch dianthus, which is more of a ground cover. Um, and it's, uh, you know, a nice pink that, uh, you know, blooms in the spring. And then pretty much it's it's done. Um, this one here is uh, American Pie uh, um, Georgia Peach. And this, this flower uh, 
it, it blooms like many carnations. Um, so you can see it's got a, a, a longer stem. Um, so you could actually uh, uh, trim these and, and, and cut them off for a, cut, for a cutting garden uh, and bring the flowers inside. Um, it has a pe peach color flower. So, um, you know something? I grabbed the wrong one. This one's Pinball Wizard. Georgia <laughs> Peach <laughs> has the same habit uh, as this, but Georgia Peach will have a, um, a peach color flower and is very fragrant. Now, this one, which has the same growth habit, um, this is uh, from the Devon Cottage series. Uh, this is Pinball Wizard, and you can see that this has a mini carnation flower on it, and um, it, uh, uh, it's a bicolor flower, so you've got a, a nice uh, pink to it uh, with raspberry splashes of color throughout the flower. Um, this one is very cool. Uh, Georgia Peach and uh, Pinball Wizard are two of the newer plants that have been out in the past couple years, uh, but you can just see by the growth habit how that would be a nice addition to any garden. Um, it will reliably bloom for you. And actually, if you trim them back after your first set of blooms in the spring, you will get more flowers during the summer. So this is more of a, I don't necessarily want to call it a continuous bloomer, but it is a very long season bloomer. So, and great for cuttings. All right, so let's talk about boxwood. All right. Okay, here. This boxwood here, this is petite pillar boxwood. Um, we've been using this as a uh, replacement for Sephruticosa boxwood or, or dwarf English boxwood uh, from doing knot gardens or, or low growing boxwood. Um, this will in time get it, um, upwards of three feet, but you can keep it pruned very nicely for a knot garden um, in that 18 to 24 inch range and create a nice small uh, border or, uh, or a small hedge. Um, it also is great in containers. Um, nice um, soft green uh, foliage that will darken to a, uh, a much darker green um, during the, uh, after the spring flush once this new growth hardens off. Um, so it's really a fantastic variety. Um, you can use it individually. You could use it as a hedge. You could use it in small containers, uh, not too small a container. I would probably put this in maybe a 12 inch pot and let it fill in that, that container. But, but this is petite pillar boxwood. I love this one. All right. Here's a cool newer variety of clematis. I wish it was blooming. It is getting ready to set buds. Uh, we can show you the, the flower there. Um, this one is uh, Royal Cascade. And uh, this was this will get tall. This will get um, six to eight uh, feet tall. Uh, great on a trellis, uh, great on your mailbox. But what I like about this one, look at that tag. Let's stop that tag. There we go. Is that better? <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Um, so what I like about this one, this will um, bloom in the spring and then we'll, we'll come back and bloom again for you um, uh, early in the fall. Uh, so you do get uh, two seasons of bloom out of it and it has a very large bloom to it. And you can see it's a, kind of that uh, bluish purple. It's more on the purple side than it is on the blue side, uh, but a very vigorous plant. And, uh, you know, you can see this one here is very healthy and and. Ready to, ready to get going. So it'll be blooming here in the next couple of weeks. So, all right. All right. Let's see. We got to bring this color. All right. So um, this is the Sun Parasol Apricot Mandevilla. So traditionally, we're used to mandevillas in uh, white, red, or pink. And uh, to have an apricot uh, uh, variety, uh, apricot color variety is really uh, spectacular. There is a new yellow variety that is, that is out, and uh, we should have that uh, uh, coming to the market uh, very strong for next spring. This year was a little bit on the uh, uh, limited availability, but uh, apricot's readily available. Um, this is uh, fantastic. You can see the amount of blooms that this plant has. Um, this is going to bloom for you all summer. You definitely want to make sure this one's in full sun. Um, Put this on a, you know, it's got a, it's on a trellis now, um, but you would want to make sure that you have this uh, on something that will, will support it. So if you have an obelisk or, or a trellis or an arbor of some sort, uh, make sure that you have something to support it. It is a vining plant. Um, so it will, um, it, if it doesn't have something to grow up on, it will kind of grow, grow out, down and out on the ground. Um, but no need for that to happen. Uh, but just put it on a, a four or five foot uh, trellis and you'll be fine. Uh, if you could even go six foot, it would reach the top of that without a problem by the end of the summer. 
Uh, but you can see the amount of blooms that it has. These are these are all buds that are coming on in here. Uh, so this is a blooming machine uh, with a very unique color. Okay. All right, I'm going to put him over here for now. And then we're going to pull out, this is a Monrovia exclusive. This is Burgundy Queen, Burgundy Queen Bougainvillea. All right, this is a cool color. It is a sport off of um, Purple Queen uh, Bougainvillea. And this was found in our Georgia nursery by one of our uh, craftsmen. Um, he was um, uh, tending to his growing range and uh, he came across this and he was like, hmm, something looks weird in the in the Purple Queen uh, Bougainvillea. And he went over and he was, he was like, oh, I need to take a cutting on that and see if that is a stable plant. And um, it's turned out to be stable. Um, stable meaning that just that it came out once, it's got to come back year after year um, with the same color. And um, this one definitely does it. It's a beautiful raspberry, um, um, kind of a, yeah, raspberry pink. Um, this will bloom all summer for you. Uh, loves full sun. Um, if you've been in California, you've seen bougainvilleas that, have, that are growing, seems like wild, um, at, they get huge. You know, they're not going to get um, huge here because this is a tropical plant here. Um, but, you know, this plant here by the end of the summer would could very easily be six feet tall and, and bloom very well for you. Now, if you want to keep Burgundy Queen or any bougainvillea over the winter, you can definitely do that. Uh, you need to bring it in the house and uh, before frost because it does not like cold weather. Um, bring it into a uh, into the house uh, make sure you've treated it for bugs before you bring it in and uh, keep it in a full sun area and even you know don't overwater it for the winter because they don't like to be overwatered but a, a full sun uh, location in the house you can keep this from year to year uh, so this is uh this is a cool new one burgundy queen right all right so let's talk roses here for a minute let me get a drink of water if you don't mind sure uh, we're happy to have Brent here today talking with us. He's our Monrovia representative, and he does a great job in getting us fabulous varieties right here. You know, it's uh, it's always fun to find uh, cool plants that uh, that Bates and the, the consumers are going to love. And, um, you know, the good thing about Monrovia, um, we grow over 4,500 different varieties of plants, so we always have something in the hopper that kind of makes it Fun and uh, exciting. All right, so this one's going to be a little harder to tell, but this is um, Grace and Grit Yellow Rose. Okay, so this is a shrub rose. This will continuously bloom all summer. Um, requires very little deadheading, but you will get more blooms when you do do a light trimming to them. One thing that we need to to uh, well, we'll get to maintenance in a second. So so you'll see you've got a nice pink bud here. It, it opens up to a bright yellow, which you can see here. Then as the flower fades, it's a lighter yellow. And then over here, here, I'll just pull this off. You can see that it fades more to a white, okay? So it goes through multiple um, uh, uh, color changes, uh, which makes the plant really exciting to have in the, in the landscape. Um, it is on the fragrant side for most shrub roses, um, you know, in the, like the knockouts and other uh, continuous blooming shrub roses, they're not really fragrant, um, but the yellow uh, grace and grit is so you can have that that rose fragrance in the garden. Um, this will get about uh, four by four. Uh, the, the best thing to do when it's done blooming its first time, give it a slight haircut uh, and, uh, and to stimulate more growth and it will rebound very quickly. Um, you'll have uh, new buds coming up within a few weeks. If you don't do a haircut to it, what you're going to want to do is not go in and just cut the, the spent flower off, you know, down to the bottom of its stem, but you're going to want to cut the individual ones that go back to the first set of five leaves. So if you do this, you know, with a hand pruner, just go back to the first set of five leaves. Um, you will see it um, like this, this set of leaves here. Uh, this only has four, but when you come down to this set here, that goes to, to five right in this area here. So uh, um, this that's very true with the, with all roses. So don't just pick the, the dead flower buds off uh, because it's not going to uh, repeat bloom for you and that will set your roses back. So, so the grace and grits also come in red, pink, and a bicolor pink. Uh, I didn't have a, a, a blooming bicolor pink, but that one is uh, 
Actually, that's my favorite, um, just because it has a very large bloom to it. Um, it's kind of more, I always think it has a little bit more of an English rose feel to it, but it's the bicolor grace and grit. And then the red is a true velvety red. Um, it, there's no pink in it. It is, it's red. Uh, so it, uh, if you're looking for a red rose, uh, that's going to be, that's going to have excellent disease resistance, um, and, uh, stay compact, uh, grace and grit red is going to be, uh, the, uh, the key for that. Now, all the grace and grits are, uh, disease resistant. Um, they, um, are continuous bloomer. They're compact, um, and, uh, very, very easy to care for. Um, now we should talk about rose rosette while we're, we're talking about it. It doesn't make a difference if what rose you have uh, rose or rosette is a real thing that you just need to be, uh, um, cognizant of, uh, just make sure you clean your, your, your pruners when you're going from rose to rose. Uh, but that's the, that's what you need to do to maintain it. And don't let anybody else prune your roses, prune your own roses. It's the, the, uh, the best way to keep your roses healthy. Um, I wouldn't let anything stop me from planting roses. Um, you know, people make a big deal out of them. The new shrub roses are so much easier to, to care for and uh, require very little maintenance. Uh, keep them evenly uh, watered, fertilize them on a regular basis, um, and you, you will have success for uh, the whole summer. And it'll always add uh, color to, to, the, to your landscape. So, all right. So, down. Let's see. Can we get down to here? Oh, that other, that. that other that other wide Yeah, actually, let me bring it up. Yeah, you might have to bring it up. <laughs> We've got so many plants here that it's hard to show them all. All right, this is another wajili that we're doing. This is brand new this year. I believe this breeding comes out of Poland, um, which is kind of exciting. Um, so this is Coco Chill. I love the name of it, Coco Chill, and you can see that it has a very mounding habit to it, all right? So this one is only gonna get three by three. Uh, so it's a nice um, uh, plant to use in front of other foundation plants um, uh, or, you know, do it in a mass planting or kind of, um, um, uh, you know, an accent plant for a, um, a pop of red. Um, it does have a beautiful pink flower to it. So you can see, let's see, we can, yeah, you can see this pink flower right here. Um, it's quite lovely. Um, this also will sporadically bloom during the summer, uh, but you can see with this deep burgundy foliage, uh, it adds a nice landscape. If you plant this with other golds, um, it really is a nice contrast. If you look at the, uh, the helianthus that was right in front of it with that, uh, let's see, you know, they contrast really nicely. Um, so, uh, you know, it'd be a, you know, a nice, nice accent in the, um, uh, in the landscape, but this is going to stay low mounding burgundy foliage all summer. Um, I would trim this back once a year. Uh, I would do it, uh, just before it starts to leaf out in the spring, uh, bring it back to around, um, 12 inches tall to keep it, uh, really compact and tight. Um, pretty low maintenance plant, um, very easy to grow. Um, and it loves full sun. Full sun is going to be important for this to make sure that you uh, do maintain the uh, the burgundy foliage. If you have it in too much uh, shade, it will the foliage will go green on you, which will still be nice, but uh, you will lose the the full impact of the plant. So uh, this one's called Coco Chill. All right. So if you have any questions for Brent, uh, please feel free to chat them or comment them at this time. Any questions about Monrovia in general as a nursery, uh, we'll be happy to take them. All right. So we're going to come to this. Uh, this is an abelia. Uh, this is called Lucky Lots Abelia. Compact grower. Uh, it has a, um, a green and gold variegation. It When you look at it, it's not like Kaleidoscope, which is golder. This is a, a green and white variegation. Um, and it's um, a small leaf. Um, it has a very dainty um, feel to it. Um, it will get nice um, uh, feathery uh, new growth to it uh, with white flowers on it, which are uh, fairly fragrant. Uh, so from an abelia standpoint, um, this is great. It also stays small. It is only a, a three by three grower. There's a lot of plants that are in here today that uh, the theme could be three by three uh, because they all grow three by three. But, so this one, um, low maintenance, full sun, um, continuous bloomer, uh, once you, uh, in, in the summer months, um, and fragrant. So 
kind of cool, right? Love the variegation on this one. Right. Now, let's talk about, let's see how we're gonna do this one. There's a cool hydrangea over here. So, one thing that's unique about this one, this one is, uh, this is Glacier Bay, right? Yeah, Glacier Bay, all right? So, Tyler, I don't know if you can uh, zoom in on the, um, the foliage or the stem at all, but this stem here is black, all right? That's not black because it's, there's something wrong with it. This has a black stem throughout the entire plant. And I think you can see that um, in, in the video there. This also has a pure white, uh, crisp pure white flower um, that stands out very nicely against the uh, the lush green foliage, um, and the um, so the it's a white lace cap flower. Um, lace caps. Uh, here's a picture of the, what the flower looks like. Let's see. I think you can get a sense there. All right. So that white flower against the black foliage is fantastic. Uh, the other nice attribute about this plant is that it is repeat blooming. All right. So to have a repeat blooming uh, black stem, white flower, hydrangea um, for a partially shaded area, we really only want this to be in morning sun. Um, afternoon sun in the south on hydrangeas, uh, they have a tendency to want to flag, which means they look like they need water, and then people will go out and water them when they don't need watering, and then they will kill them with kindness because they think their plants need to be watered, but they really don't because it's just too hot of a sun in the afternoon for them. Uh, but this will do great in, in morning sun. Uh, it is repeat blooming, so you can go in and uh, take off the dead flowers, uh, and when you're doing that, you also, just like in the roses, you don't want to take off just the flower. You want to come down into the, into the stem and take off something down a little bit further where you've got uh, the leaflets right here. And, and cutting something like that, cutting this flower off when it's done, and then cutting it down here will uh, keep it full and also uh, help it uh, regenerate to bloom. Um, pretty low maintenance. Um, this is not changeable from white to pink. Um, you may get a little bit of pink in the fade at the end of the uh, at the end of the bloom, which where a lot of uh, white flowers do that. Uh, but for the most part, it'll stay uh, a nice crisp white right to the end, and then repeat bloom for you. Three by three grower again, compact, really fantastic. So, all right, and then we have another one. I'm going to set this one on the ground. Go for it. <clears throat> I did not realize the black stem uh, in that plant. The and I didn't, I didn't realize they could get that dark. Yeah, it, it, it's incredibly dark. The, the black stem is, is something else. All right. So this is a cool white. And this one is um, uh, the Double Delights wedding gown. So if you're having a wedding coming up, you know, next year, this would be a great plant to, to uh, plant for um, late spring, early summer blooming here uh, naturally in the landscape. This particular plant was grown in, in probably in Georgia, um, so it's blooming a little bit earlier than normal. Uh, but this has a, a beautiful um, uh, round mop head flower to it. The flower, the florets that are in the, the bloom itself, um, you can see these individual flowers, um, they... Um, they are double flowered, so they are going to um, uh, uh, give you a much fuller looking flower, whereas some of the florets and uh, hydrangeas are single flowers, uh, but this is a, a double and uh, there's multiple petals within that. So um, this is a compact, uh, long lasting, I don't really call this one a repeat blooming, but it, it is a, a very long lasting bloom um, that will stay compact. Also, um, wedding gown is three feet tall and about five feet wide. Uh, so really deep, rich foliage. Uh, it's kind of, the foliage is leathery on this, so that will hold up really well. And just like in the Glacier Bay, morning sun's gonna be your best best option. You don't want to uh, put them in the hot uh, afternoon sun. Uh, any of the macrophylla hydrangeas um, uh, or the serrata, uh, yeah, serrata folias, um, you really don't want to put those in the, uh, the afternoon sun. It's just too hot for them. If you do want sun hydrangeas, then you want to go with the paniculata varieties. Um, you know, a couple of the Monrovia ones that, whoops, that uh, we have um, uh, exclusives on are uh, Candy Apple, which is, uh, I consider it a, a dwarf limelight. It gets um, 
four to five feet tall, has a huge bloom on it. Um, it uh, has a, a, a beautiful white white flower um, that will bloom early summer. You can start getting blooms on those in June. Uh, mine at, at my house are just starting to bud up. So by the time we hit June 1st, I'll probably start to have a, a crack of color. Um, there's also strawberry shake, which is uh, a pink and white flower, paniculata, summer blooming that gets uh, around uh, five feet tall as well. You know, of course, then there's, um, you know, limelight and little limes, you know, that are, have been out for a long time as well. So, but the, the summer blooming ones are, uh, generally paniculatas, uh, require full sun. They can take partially shaded area, uh, but the more sun you have, it, uh, the happier that they will be. So, all right. Um, how are we doing on time? We're just two minutes past the half hour. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can talk about this plant behind us. All right. So you can see this arborvitae back here. All right. So maybe you can uh, pan out a bit. Uh, this is probably the best shot for that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. That'll work. All right. So this... It, it, when you first look at it, you kind of think that it's going to be an emerald green arborvitae, but it's actually not. It is a, uh, a cousin of the uh, green giant arborvitae. And what makes this plant, this is called tiny towers, right? Full sun, part shade, but whereas green giant gets huge, it could have a 12 foot skirt to it, um, 20, 30 feet tall. Uh, this will have a five foot skirt and a um, about a 12 to 15 foot in height. So like an emerald green that grows tall and narrow, um, you can do that with the tiny towers. This will grow tall and narrow uh, and to give you the, the Western arborvitae look like a green giant um, on a much more compact plant. So this is a, a Monrovia exclusive. This is a absolutely fantastic plant, fast growing. Uh, so if, you're, if you have a small space and you want a nice border that you don't wanna have the same plant that everybody else has as their border, which is emerald greens, um, tiny towers is a great, uh, Great substitute for that. So, uh, really cool arborvitae. Now, let's see here. Let's see if we can get you uh, something else. Let me show you. All right. Now, how are we going to do this one over here? Uh, I'll have uh, to zoom see, in up over here. You can see this? Okay. This here, this is Emerald Colonnade Holly. This holly has taken the, the south by storm as far as uh, a holly that... Um, is hardy, is uh, fast growing, um, that looks like boxwood. Um, it, uh, it, it, we can grow this in many forms. This particular one here, this is a tree form. So this one is about four feet tall. Um, you can see that there's, uh, no, there's not a trunk there, or there's a trunk, but no foliage. I'm gonna bring this over here. Maybe you can see that. Pull it in a little. There you there go. We go. You can see that it's got a, a trunk here. So this is a tree formed emerald colonnade. Um, we grow this in a spiral. Um, we grow it in a pyramid. We grow it in a two ball and three three ball um, um, patio um, topiary. Uh, it can be trimmed into pretty much any shape that you want. I, we also do um, hedges with them, um, uh, patio hedges in, in troughs. Um, but this plant here, um, eat, it's a fantastic plant for. Um, for containers as long as you use a large enough container um so this particular one is in a five five gallon which is about a 12 inch pot if you were to put that into a 20 inch pot and use that on your front porch and then you can plant other things around the bottom of it um, depending on how much sun you have you don't want to put this in a totally shaded porch uh, but you could put it um, in a partially shaded porch and uh, you know grow ivy and you could leave it there from season to season if you wanted to you know put um your different annuals in there and put pansies in for the winter and ivy. Um, you can definitely use it in the container um, on a year round basis, or you can use it in the landscape as a nice accent. Uh, if you're using, if you wanted a, uh, the, a, a hedge, you could use uh, the pyramid ones that we grow um, that would make a fantastic hedge. It would get around uh, 12 feet tall and um, prune really well. Um, if you need a spiral accent by your front door, you could use a spiral, use those in the container as well. Um, so Emerald Colonnade, fast growing, dark, almost black foliage, um, easy to grow, very 
I don't know of any um, insect issues that it has, um, but the color on it is fantastic, and it, it just fits all the the it checks all the boxes for a a, um, a hedge or accent plant for uh, your landscape. So, so I think we've covered quite a bit this morning. Are there any uh, messages in the uh, chat room that we need to talk about? I'm not seeing any questions so far. Okay. So uh, that's what I have today. Thank you very much for joining us in uh, talking about new plants and Monrovia plants. Uh, we look forward to seeing you in the garden center, and I hope you have a fantastic spring and uh, go out and dig in the dirt. Mm-hmm.